Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Target Exclusive Gold Label Changing of the Guard Kyle Rayner Green Lantern. This is the second Kyle Rayner they've made. This is a variant for the Blackest Night version, and I personally think this one looks a little bit better. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see at the top, 22 moon parts, McFarlane Toys, age 12 plus. McFarlane Gold Label Collection, DC Multiverse, Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner. Here he is in the package. He comes with a couple of construct accessories, a sword and some armor. He also has a display stand and a collector's card. One side of the package, Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner from Changing the Guard. Other side, Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner. At the bottom, got a bunch of credits and there is a barcode in case it helps anybody. And on the back side, here he is posed up. Looks like the costume is quite accurate to the source material here. So no further ado, let's open him up. All right, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He comes with a display stand, a collector's card, and two construct accessories, some armor, and a sword. But before I look at those, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So this is Kyle Rayner. He's one of the Green Lanterns. I consider Hal Jordan the main one. John Stewart's up there. I think Kyle Rayner is more popular than Guy Gardner at this point, although Guy Gardner is a little older than him as far as when his first appearance was. This is the second Kyle Rayner figure they've made, and this one is in more or less his proper suit, and the suit looks a lot better than the Blackest Night release. And don't worry, we'll check them out next to each other in a little bit. For now, let's take a look at him. One of the biggest things, his head sculpt, he doesn't have that crazy smile, almost looks like a Joker thug in the other figure. Hair looks nice, parted. The mask looks good, it's green. He's got a regular expression. His outfit is predominantly black. A little bit of white in the front, Green Lantern logo. Got green on his hands, his boots, double jointed knees, double jointed elbows. Really nice texturing on the suit. I'd say they did a pretty nice job with this figure. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt, you can also really see the texturing on his suit. Hair looks fantastic. Expression's good. Mask. Whole nine yards. And here's the head sculpt from the Blackest Night version. He just has this goofy smile that pretty much messed the figure up in my head. I also wanted to point out his power ring. On his right hand, his fisted hand, he's got a power ring. It's painted green, sculpted. Always like those little details. Now let's take a look at his accessories. And let's start off with the boring stuff. Here's that McFarland stand we've seen a million times. Black perfect circle. It says DC on the bottom. It's got one peg with the pegels on his feet. Very thin, very basic. Here's his collector's card. As you can see, it's an image of Kyle Rayner Green Lantern wearing the exact same suit. Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner from Changing the Guard. On the back side, there is a description. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause now. Here's his collector's card. Next to Blackest Night, Kyle's collector's card. Both these cards use images from the comic, from the source material. I much prefer that than using simply an image of the action figure. Now let's check out his accessories. Kind of a little samurai theme going on. Some samurai armor and a sword. The armor itself looks pretty good. Both pieces are cast in a semi-transparent green material. You can see it's made of a bendable material. Should be able to fit on most of your figures. Then we have the sword here. Looks pretty good. A little bit of sculpting detail on the handle. Now this is not the first time McFarland has given us Green Lantern Construct swords and armor. Here are all of the different Construct Green Lantern accessories McFarland has made so far. And most of them are interchangeable with each of the figures. Here's Kyle without the armor on. And then here with the armor attached. Fits nice and snug on him. I'm curious how it'll fit on the other Lantern figures. It fits super snug on the other Kyle figure, but they're pretty much the same body. And Hal Jordan's body, a little bit too big for it, but still fudgeable. And Hal Jordan uses the same body as both the Jon Stewart figures. And I was mildly curious about the previous armor onto this Kyle figure. Yeah, it fits, but it damn sure doesn't look good. And here he is holding the sword. He can only hold it with his left hand, which I have mixed feelings on. Now I wanted to check out the differences between this changing the guard Kyle and the Blackest Knight Kyle. Obviously, 
the majority of the is the same figure. But let's check out what differences there are. So starting with their feet, see their actual feet and ankles are the same. Their boots are definitely different. The overall base body is the same. You can see the texturing, the sculpt, just a different paint job. Their heads are obviously quite different. Then their arms are the same, but the glove and hand are totally different. You can see he's got the sculpted glove, exposed fingers. So not a straight repaint, just mostly that way. Now they've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories. Now let's check out his height. From bottom to top of his head, he's standing at about 7.2 inches tall, which can translate to about 18 centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation. Start with his head here. Of course, you can rotate from side to side. He can look up and down about that much. Not too much, it's pretty tight. You can tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint. Goes out more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest. Increase the range of motion and cover up the large gap. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows that go all the way in. His wrists can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. Ball joint is torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist, rotate around, forward and back. Giving him pretty wide range of motion here. Going to get more out of the waist than the torso on this guy. Legs, almost complete to splits. Not a ball joint, but a similar type of concept. Rotation is minimal, non-existent. Legs go forward that far, back not much. Double jointed knees, then his ankle here. Done in the new style, not the ugly ball joints. Forward and back, rotate. Tilt, rock, and to articulation. And as the Green Lantern Oath goes, in brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware of power, Green Lantern's light. Here's Kyle, hovering in the sky, getting ready to use his lantern powers. And then here in the sky, with both his armor and sword, ready for combat. Now let's check him out, next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other McFarland DC Moldegris figures. Here's the change of the guard, Kyle. Next to the Blackest Knight, Kyle. Both solid releases, but I'd say this one is definitely superior to the other one. And here he is, next to the Hell Jordan Green Lantern figure. And they have given us one variation of Hell Jordan. This is when Parallax took over. Here he is, next to a John Stewart Green Lantern figure. And they gave us three different variations of John Stewart so far. And then here he is, next to Dawnbreaker. A Batman Green Lantern hybrid. Here would be my three favorite versions of the Green Lantern figures Hal Jordan, Kyle Rayner, and Jon Stewart. Here are all the different Green Lantern figures McFarland has made so far. Really, I only have four different characters. I imagine they're going to really expand the roster in the future. Here he is, next to some McFarland Red Lantern figures. We have Batrocitus and Atrocitus. And here's Kyle, next to McFarland's Black Lantern figures, Batman. Firestorm, and Superman. And while they're not McFarland figures, here he is, next to my Yellow Lantern figures. I didn't get any of the ones that you normally would think of. I've got Batman, Scarecrow, and a couple Predators. I'm sure McFarland will release some Yellow Lanterns in the future, probably starting with Sinestro. Now let's check him out. Next to some other recent released McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here he is, with the rest of the recent Target-exclusive Gold Label figures. We have Defiant Deathstroke. Just as the Endless Winter Wonder Woman, Changing the Guard, Kyle Rayner, and the Black Adam movie Black Adam with Throne. And here he is, next to a couple of more Target exclusive figures. We've got Ocean Master and the 30th Anniversary Batman from Batman the Animated Series. Here he is, next to the Amazon exclusive Batman Family 5 pack. Then, next to the Speed Metal Wave, Collective Build Darkest Night. Here's Kyle, next to the Arkham City Wave, Collective Build Solomon Grundy. And here he is, next to the third wave of Page Punchers. This was a Flash-themed wave. We have the Atom, Flash, Gorilla Grodd, Heat Wave, and Captain Cold. Then, next to the second wave of Page Punchers, this is based off Injustice 2. We have Batman and Green Arrow. And now, next to the first wave of Page Punchers, this is a Black Adam-themed wave. Batman, Superman, Constantine, and Black Adam. Here's Kyle, next to the two most recent mega figures, at least before Gorilla Grodd. This is Bane and Necron. And here he is, next to some recent Walmart exclusive gold label figures. We've got the Speedmelt Dark Flash, Rebirth Shazam, Nightfall Azrael Batman Armor, 
and Parallax Hell Jordan. Then, with the McFarland Toy Store exclusive, Hush Shootman and Rebirth Kid Flash. And now, next to Court of Owls Talon and the Rebirth Deathstroke. Here's Kyle, next to some McFarland Mortal Kombat 11 DC figures. The Batman Head Laughs and Joker. And here he is, with the Blue Beetle and Booster Gold 2 pack. Then, next to Speeding Bullets Batman and the Dark Knight's Metal Batrocitus. And now, with the Future State Superman, the New 52 Static, and the Infinite Frontier Scarecrow. And here he is, next to the gold label paint variations of the Arkham Knight Scarecrow and Red Hood. These are McFarland Toy Store exclusives. And finally, here he is, next to the Black Adam Movie Wave. Now let's check him out, next to some action figures from different various companies, to see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know what signs you can mix him with. Since he's a McFarland figure, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect. They work way smaller, and I'm going to include as many Green Lantern figures as I can during these comparisons. Since we already checked them out, next to plenty of McFarland Green Lantern figures, here he is, next to some more McFarland toys. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarland toys, all 7-inch scale. Then, with some more McFarland toys, these are from different various video game properties. And now, with some Jack specific wrestling figures. And here he is, with some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here he is, standing next to some NECA figures. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, with some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112 collective figures. Then, with some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse Green Lantern figures. And here he is, with some Mafex figures. Then, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here he is, next to some SH figure arts action figures. And finally, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. Overall, it's a very nice Green Lantern figure. It's definitely McFarland's best Kyle figure they've made. I prefer this one to the other one for a couple reasons. I wasn't a big fan of the whole green outfit. The shade just kind of put me off. And then that goofy face. Come on. This is a nice default Kyle Rayner figure. His accessories are pretty cool, although I'm not really sure why they went with the samurai theme. The skull to paint job are excellent, no issues there. Articulation is everything you'd expect from a McFarland DC Multiverse figure. Only thing lacking is some sort of thigh rotation. If I were to rate this figure, I'm going to give him a solid 7.5 out of 10. A great addition to the Green Lantern Corps. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.